Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ashlyn and I am a dancer, a yogi, and lover of all things wellness and women's empowerment. Today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about what it means to start late in the dance world and if it's actually possible to make a career in the dance industry if you start at a later age. What does starting late in the dance industry actually mean? Well, it's interesting because I didn't start dancing until I was 16. However, I was constantly told that I started too late and that I would never be successful in what I wanted to achieve. One of my biggest inspirations for starting late in the dance industry is Misty Copeland. She also started at a later age and was told because of this that she would never be successful. Also being an African-American woman in the ballet industry of dance, everything that people said that she would never do, she did it and she did more. My path in dance was not easy. It was hard. There were a lot of tears, a lot of pain, and it's mostly because of me letting other people decide for me what I wanted or what I had to do or that I was only going to be as good as they thought. I started dancing ballroom at age 16, which is an older age in the ballroom industry considering there are so many people internationally that grow up in the ballroom studios. When you go to a competition and you see these tiny, tiny little kids absolutely killing it, and I mean so fierce, so technically sound, it makes you feel bad about yourself. Even though you've worked so hard to even get to the point that you're at, it makes you feel like you're never gonna be good enough. So I was walking into it with only a background in sports, really no dance training at all, except when I was really little, like five or six, and I absolutely hated the ballet classes my mom <laughs> made me go to. So where I trained in ballroom was in North Carolina. I'm from a city called Asheville, which I absolutely adore. However, the ballroom side of things is not as prevalent as it is in somewhere like Utah, which is where I am now, New York City, or LA. There are no partnerships available for people that were starting at my age. So therefore, I dance pro-am, which means that you compete with your professional coach and you're the only one that's judged. This side of ballroom is not only incredibly expensive, but it's very hard to achieve a certain level if you are constantly having to pay someone to dance with you, as well as you're not getting to spend as much time in the dance studio. And that's what I felt like my problem was. I felt like I was always, always behind, no matter what I did to try to get ahead, no matter how many hours I practiced on my own, I could never catch up to what I thought I should be capable of at my age. I had coaches tell me that I should just start teaching because I was never going to make it into a competitive career. I had people be brutally honest about what they thought about my dancing and it wasn't good. This is the thing. There will always be someone better than you. You will always find a way to compare yourself to someone else and feel bad about yourself. And that is the first way that we can negatively impact our growth. Because of this, I found myself getting caught up in the drama of the ballroom industry and just taking what other people were saying about me and my dancing as the cold, hard truth and that I was just never going to make it. Things that really took me to rock bottom as far as my confidence goes, I no longer believed that I was capable of achieving any of my goals. It's hard to really continue on the path that you want to continue on if so many people are telling you that it's wrong and so many people are telling you that you're not good enough. I had to really get internal with myself and really find out what it was that I wanted out of my dancing, especially after an injury that I had happen about a year and a half ago, I had to just get really clear about what it is that I wanted out of dance, what made me happy, and I realized the thing that I was working so, so hard for wasn't even what I wanted. Not even a little bit, but I felt like it was what I had to do, and I felt like I had to prove something to all of these people that told me that I couldn't do it. I feel like this was such a pivotal moment in my dance journey. Just when you're honest with yourself, it's incredible about what you find out and what you realize that you've been infiltrated by so many people's opinions and ideas and 
you haven't had a chance to think for yourself. And I feel like my injury really gave me that opportunity to just stop all the chatter and come into my body, my soul, and realize what it is that was actually important to me. Especially in the ballroom world, I wasn't comfortable with a lot of things that I quote unquote had to do to make it to the top and that's okay. I found another path for myself. I found different styles of dance that I'm passionate about. So if you want to be successful in the dance world, whatever path it is that you want to take, I feel like there are three key components that will help you get there. And the first one is dedication and work ethic. I feel like no matter what path you decide to take in the dance industry, it's really important to understand what it takes to be a successful dancer. Whether your goal is to be a teacher or be a backup dancer for Justin Bieber, like whatever it is that you wanna do, you have to understand what it's gonna take to get you there. And I feel like once you realize that, you can decide if that's going to be something that you're willing to do. So when I was dancing ballroom, I was not only practicing in the studio all the time, but I was practicing on my own. I was trying to go to as many competitions as possible, take from some of the top coaches in the world. That was what I needed to be doing at the time to reach my certain goal. I was putting in a lot of hours, but honestly, I wasn't putting in as much as I could have because I wasn't as passionate about it as I thought that I was. And now that I have discovered my passions such as heels and burlesque and Latin dancing without a partner, I put in so many hours and I love every single moment of it. I have to dance six out of seven days a week. It's on my calendar. It's non-negotiable unless I'm like traveling or something like that. And then also I'm trying to take the time to do inner work, self-care, really get internal with myself and have a more spiritual practice to go along with my physical dance practice because that's really important to me. How you do one thing is how you do everything. So if you wanna be really successful in the dance industry, you have to kind of do that in all areas of your life. So whether it is, you know, self-help and learning and taking care of your body, your mind, and your spirit, whether that's doing yoga so that your muscles and your flexibility, your joints and bones can all be safe for the amount of hours that you put in to your dancing. Or whether that's dedicating time to have a healthy diet and eat a lot of vegetables and juices and nourishing fruits that will fuel you to be able to do the amount of dancing and physical exercise and output that you want to in order to achieve your goals. So the dedication aspect is absolutely, absolutely crucial and you have to be willing to dedicate so much of your time, so much of your emotional energy on whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. The second part of this process is the direction that you're wanting to take. So you have to have a really clear, defined direction in order for all of this other stuff to work. So the direction I have right now is focused on building a community. It's focused on empowering women to feel good in their bodies. It's focused on continually improving my dance skills so that I can in turn give that passion and love of dance to others. I am focused on making that my life path, my career. I'm very clear about what direction that I'm going in. When you have that specific goal, it can make the dedication a lot easier because you're passionate about it. You want it so, so badly and you're willing to put in the time that it takes. The third part of this process is your action plan. So the steps that it will take to get you to that goal, to get you on that path of direction. Like I said before, I make sure that I dance six days a week and not only dancing, but I'm gathering information to make myself a better dancer, more knowledgeable so that I can help in turn more people and have more to offer to them. I do yoga every single day to keep my body healthy. I make sure that I'm reading books and inputting knowledge through YouTube videos and master classes to just help me be an overall better person. And I feel like that can go into any industry that you're working towards. In addition to all the work, I think it's incredibly, incredibly important to take a day for self-care. If we don't take care of ourselves, our bodies, our minds, our souls, we can't give anything to others because we're constantly going to be in a state of lack. 
So even though it feels like you're taking time off, it's really, really important time off and it actually fuels the goal that you're wanting to achieve. All of this to say that yes, I did start dancing at a later age and maybe in the beginning I did let it affect me and hold me back, but I don't do that anymore. I don't allow other people to tell me if I'm going to be successful, if I'm going to make it, like what does that even mean? I don't know, I feel like everyone's definition is different and I am so much happier with what my definition of that is now and I feel much more confident in what it is that I wanna achieve because it's my own. It's my own goals, it's my own passion that I've created. I've really curated my life to include all of the things that I want and that I feel like inspire me. So what is it that you love about dance? Or what makes you want to get started in dance? No matter what age you are, if you just wanna do it for fun, go ahead, it will be the best decision of your life. But if you do want to make it into a career, find out what you love about it and find out, even if there are parts of it you don't like that you can change, just do that. Feel free to pave your own way because to me, that is the best thing about dance is that there is no one size fits all. We really can do so much with dance and our passion for it. We can help so many people. And I think that's such the incredible thing about this art form is that anyone can enjoy the way that dance makes us feel, the way that it connects us, the way that it can tell a story or a message. There's so many beautiful components of that that we can really make our own. I promise you will be so much happier than allowing others to just continually tell you what to do. And I think this is the beauty of starting late, like I said before, because we're able to completely tune in to what we want and desire. And even if we have had people in the past tell us certain things, they're not so ingrained in us that we can't kind of move them out of the way and focus on what it is that we actually want to do. I have achieved so many things in my dance career that I never thought were possible years ago, like traveling the world and dancing on cruise ships, which was such a dream come true, and directing and starring and producing my own Dancing with the Stars show in my hometown in North Carolina. So do I think it's possible to be successful in the dance industry at a late age? Absolutely. There are no questions. If you love it, if you want it, if you want to have a career in dance, you can do that and you can do it in any way that you want. Do not, do not, do not let anyone tell you otherwise. I really hope that you guys take this information and start on your dance journey or if you're already on it, know that you are exactly where you're supposed to be, whatever age it is that you are, and you can reach whatever capabilities that you desire if you put in the work and the attention and the dedication and the passion, you can do it all. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please click the like button below, subscribe to my channel, and make sure that your notifications are turned on so that you can get an update anytime that I post a new video. Make sure to follow me on my Instagram, Ashlyn Tori Dance, as well as Studio Soli Luna, which is going to be an exciting new platform that I cannot wait to bring to you guys. So make sure you stay updated on all the new things coming soon with that. I hope you guys have such a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Vogue. Vogue. <laughs>